Hello! Right, let's have a chat about Rivers of Blood. No, no, not the not the Oswald Mosley thing. No, no, it, it, no. I meant, no, I meant actual actual Rivers of Blood, like this um, like this one here. You can see on the uh, on the gaming board. So boiling rivers of roughing blood. You can see coming out of this uh, this eight pointed star here. So yeah, some kind of chaotic you know, nonsense afoot. And I want to show you how to do blood, but specifically frothing, boiling blood coming out of a river. Um, now, do feel free to skip ahead a little bit in the video if you would, uh, if you just want to find out how to do it and you know you just want me to kind of get to the point. But I also wanted to have a bit of a chat with you about the uh, the narrative behind the board, what's going on, uh, because we've also got here a chaos temple. So the idea is there's going to be, um, as you can see, a little kind of um, well here where the blood's going to be flowing out of. But I'm going to switch to jack cam, which is a very, very technical thing where I'm going to be strapping the camera to my head so you can see it a little bit better. Right, back in the tickaroo, one second. Just got to get some sellotape. Give me one moment. Right, you are now strapped to my head. And as you can see in front of you, here is a Chaos Temple. Um, it's made from an old bit of packaging. I mean, no one's going to look at this and think, oh, wow, a fantastic new kit from Games Workshop. Yeah, that's a, that's a cracker. I wonder how, many, how they made that. No, it's obviously some packaging material. But you know what? It's a really nice piece of terrain. Yeah, it's just spray painted um, black with some Poundland black spray paint. And then you can see here the um, kind of horrible slimy effect there. That's just some uh, some old stain varnish. Um, so light oak, if you're interested. But use whatever you've got hanging around in the shed. And it gives it this kind of slightly Lovecraftian alien stone effect. Now, the narrative behind the piece, uh, which we spoke about before, so you know, narrative, very important in terrain, we'll touch on that in a later episode, is this is a, um, a temple, a ruined temple, obviously, uh, with notoriously kind of slightly slapdash approach to health and safety there. You know, we've got some ladders, um, you know, a gangplank for the models to run across. Um, just a, another point, by the way, just once on my mind is always make sure when you've got terrain that you're going to be moving across, that there's, a, there's an element of danger to it. You know, when the movement phases is so important in skirmish games that uh, you need to make sure that there's that kind of element of, ooh, you know, will they fall off the rickety rope ladder or will they, the, this rotten plank, you know, snap under their weight? So it, it's nice to have those little touches. But anyway, I'm, I'm banging on. But here's the, the sacrificial altar stone, which is a stone with some chains that I've glued on there. And I don't know if you can see that little groove there that I did just with uh, uh, an engraving pen in the stone. It took absolutely ages uh, just to get that tiny groove. But that's where the blood's going to be flowing, flowing down there into this well, uh, which is kind of like, a, like an evil jacuzzi almost. Now, here's where it fits in with the rest of the board. If you'll just, uh, just excuse me for one moment. There you go. Now, this links up here. So it's going to be flowing from the altar stone down into the, uh, into the hot tub of evil. And then out here, flowing over here, then down here. And there you go, and you can see the, the river of blood there it's going to be flowing into some sort of uh, maybe an evil um, valley to, um, you know, water some evil crops for some some evil sustenance farmers or, or something, I don't know. But yeah, so it's nice to have something that, you know, if I decide not to use the temple, there you go, so I've got this mark here, which by the way, always put a mark in the exact centre of your board means you don't have to measure it for objectives and everything at the, the start of the game. So if I don't use the temple, it's coming out of this eight-pointed star. And if I do use the temple, then it's coming out of the, the hot tub of evil. Right, so I'm going to take this off my forehead because I'm starting to get a headache. Right, so let's start painting our boiling blood. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to give it a little undercoat of some red. So of a brush that you're not terribly fond of, uh, yeah, and spread that on there quite happily. You know, don't be too neat about it. What this is, is just anywhere that's missed by the, uh, the boiling blood. This will kind of help make sure that it's still got that, uh, still got that redness and it'll just give, give it somewhere to kind of cling to really. Right, so let's kind of paint that on there. 
da ba da ba do just like that. There we are. Now, that looks ridiculously bright red, and it is, but there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is because it won't show as much beneath the boiling blood, but, you know, this is just cheap red paint, and it just needs a base coat, really. So don't go too overboard. And remember, we want it overflowing over the edge, so just going to give that a tickle there. There we go. Right. Uh, there we go. Let's just pop the brush in the water. If you care at all, I like to use as a water brush. It is uh, this thing here, which I choose to put my brushes in. It's, a, it's an old mug with some dinosaurs on it. Uh, now, while we're waiting for that to dry, while we're waiting for the temple to dry, I just wanted to have a bit of a chat about the different types of options that you've got for uh, blood. Now, I've tried out a few different things. Um, I've tried out a blend of resin and pigment, and then I tried just resin and then painting the pigment on top, and these are the results. Um, in case you can't read gibberish, let me talk you through these. Um, so, this first one is Crimson Shade, so basically just a, an ink. So when it's mixed in with the pigment, it's given this kind of dark red thing, which isn't unpleasant, but you know, it's not blood, it's not what we want. Uh, when it's placed on top, it kind of slides around the place, and again, not really. Um, next we've got a bright red paint, which we mixed in with the, uh, uh, with the resin, and it's given basically a very, very bright red liquidy look. Uh, when it was painted on top, um, you know, it looked a bit more matte, really, which is, which is understandable. Uh, next, finally, we had Blood for the Blood God Technical Paint, which, when it was mixed in, absolutely superb. That is the best one that, we, that, was, uh, that was tested, and that's the one that I'd recommend for um, if you've got stagnant blood, so I don't know, um, if you've got a, a pool of blood, say, or a well of blood, or a puddle of blood, or... Um, you know, just a, a glass of blood or something like that. Um, you can just use blood for the blood god straight from the bottle, but it's a very small pot and, you know, it's quite expensive. So if you dilute it with some resin, then, you know, you can save yourself a few quid that way. Now, finally, we've got resin with blood for the blood god painted on it. Now, the nice thing about blood for the blood god is it flows like real blood. A tiny bit of it will give a smear, and then a lot of it will give great big kind of globs of blood. Um, but the downside of it is that it flows like real blood, so you end up with things like this, where it um, doesn't really give a clear coverage. So that's what we're going to be doing with a little objective marker that I've got here for you as well to look at. Da -da 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 -da. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. So those, that is a, a well which contains three scary, spooky heads, which dispense their wisdom and um, inane ramblings to those who are evil enough to hear it. And yeah, that's a really, really simple objective marker to make. We'll, we'll do another video about objectives later on, but that is just a uh, little sto dry stone wall made of, well, pebbles, which are then painted, um, and then in the middle there, there's some heads from the Chaos Spawn kit. So, yeah, kind of a nice, easy thing there. But we'll sort that out, because I'm going to show you actually how to do a little pool of uh, blood in there. Because I think it would be quite nice if the heads were kind of coming out of a, uh, uh, you know, coming out of a you know, bloody, frothing mess. You know. Now, the, the resin that I'm using is this stuff, which is Block Extra Strong. So this is two quid for a packet of two. Hi, sorry about that, Amazon delivery driver, so, hey, what can you do? Right, anyway, where was I? Oh yes, pools of blood, hideous, weird, disorientated, talking heads and stuff. So, let's show you how to make some a pool of blood. So, it's, you, to mix it up, just use the case from the, um, uh, from the resin bottle, and you don't need too much. Let's see, so, we only need a tiny bit, so let's squeeze out the one part of the resin. There you go, and that's enough. So, there you go. Always feel a bit like an alchemist doing this. It's quite jolly, you know. Right, and then the other part, there we go. So make sure you've got equal amounts. And a good way to test is hold the tubes up next to each other and just check. And, oh, I need a, maybe a smidge more of this. 
the dollop should do. There we are. Smidge and a dollop, very kind of technical measurement terms there, but, you know, I'm a very technical guy. And then what we do is just mix it together with the handy-dandy included little plastic spatula thing. There we go. And you're looking for basically a uniform colour. When it's all the same colour, it's mixed and it's ready to be used. Da -da 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 now. That's, yeah, that's all kind of the same shade of colour, I think. Now, we just need a teeny tiny bit of blood for the blood god. So I'm just going to pour that in. Come on. Come on. Come on, don't be shy. There we go. All right. Right, that's enough. That's, ooh, that's more than enough. Right. So you can see that there, and then what the pigment of that paint will do is that will stir it in and mix it in. And again, you're looking for a consistent colour. And what it will swiftly turn into is this kind of slightly gobby thing. Um, I'm sure there's a technical term for it, but let's go with gobby for the time being. All right, so give that a bit of a stir. There we go, so you can see that. Now, the trick is with something like this, where we've got a, whoop, where we've got quite a small bit that we're looking to put it into, is we're going to do it a little bit at a time. So it's still it's still liquid, so it will fill the mould of whatever we put it into. But the nice thing about any of these kind of projects, there we go. You see that's going in there quite nicely. Is remember if you mess up, if it goes messy, who cares? You know, unless you're a commissioned painter, um, you know you're doing this for your own pleasure the pleasure of your friends, so you know what, don't get too precious about it. Right. And as well as that, it's chaos. Hi, so overnight the mixture of blood for the blood god and the cheapo resin that I got from Amazon has dried and it looks really nice, it's given this kind of beautiful glossy uh, look to the blood. So absolutely perfect for you know, stagnant blood, blood in a pool, um, a great big pool of blood, you know, a puddle of blood, perhaps. You know, there, there are only so many words for you know, a bit of water, but, you know, you get the idea. Um, but moving on to boiling blood. So, this is how the hot tub of evil is looking at the moment. So, as you can see, it's a very, very bright, glossy red. Um, so, I've put the, um, the mixture for boiling blood into there and popped it on. I did take a video of me doing this, but sadly the footage was so terrible that I couldn't show it to you. And bearing in mind how terrible my footage is normally, that should tell you something. So, I'm going to show you this when it's dry, um, but I'm also going to show you how to make it, because that's kind of why you've come to the video, so bear with me. Right, this also gives me a nice excuse to make another piece of terrain. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this, uh, this old yoghurt tub, and I'm going to make a little, little kind of pond of boiling blood. Yeah. Well, why not? Right, so I'm going to use the top of the, uh, the packet of resin. So that's quite a useful thing to mix stuff up in. And a bit of leftover resin here. So just putting in the, the epoxy. There you go, just squeeze that in there. They always buy more resin than you need. Because it's also very useful to, to have household jobs. See, and I think I'll use up this tube here just while I'm wow I'm at it. There we go. So, and then we've got the other part, which is the other part of the well, it's the other part of the resin, yeah, which is the hardener and which is the actual resin is you know, rather academic to be honest. Um, you need an equal part of each thingamajig, so you know, I'm not terribly fussed about which does which job chemically. Yeah, so squeezing that in there. And now for the secret ingredient for boiling blood, which is this stuff, uh, which is just fake blood, which you can buy from the pound shop at Halloween time. Uh, you can get from any half-decent joke shop. Um, it doesn't need to be the expensive special effects stuff. In fact, the cheapo stuff does just a good a job. They get now, ooh, that's, an, that's a little bit hard to control this stuff, so might have added a little bit too much there, but hey, let's see what happens. Right, now, fold that in, just like, you're, uh, just like if you're folding in eggs in a cake mixture. 
quickly and stir that in and you're looking for a consistent colour. So there we go. So give that a good stir. Again, when that's a consistent kind of shade of red. There you go. Now, fortunately it will dry solid. So you don't need to worry if it's too goopy at this stage. And then, so what the plan here is that this bit here is going to be covered um, with mud or, or maybe snow. I could add that to the snowy side of the board. Um, like some sort of winter um, hot spring. That's quite a nice idea. But I'm going to use this dent, indent in the middle just to pour it in. I guess pour that in there like that. There you, there you go. I'm just going to add that much and I can always add more later if I want to. And then poke that out to the edges. Now, don't worry too much with this if it, uh, if it does go over the sides a bit. Now, hindsight has 20 20 vision. I should have probably put a red undercoat under this um, so that the white bits don't poke through. But you know what? Let's see what happens. It'll be good fun. And the thing is, with, uh, with something like this, where we're applying quite a lot and it's, uh, it's not going to flow anywhere, this is going to set still here, then to be honest I don't think we're going to see any white bits anyway. But the lovely thing is, as this dries, what we're going to get is we're not going to get this flat red colour. Because, you know, don't ask me, I'm not a chemist, um, but the way that it settles and the way that it dries is it gives kind of a nice frothing, bubbly effect which you can see on the, the river here. You can see that there, you can see the bubbles um, coming up um, just there. And you can see that this here is just still drying and you can see that you've just got the start of, uh, of the bubbly effect going on. Uh, right, let's leave that to dry and we'll come back to that in a few hours. Hello, welcome back. As I'm sure you've noticed, we've had a slight change of scenery. Uh, this is due to the fact that my wife, not unfairly, pointed out that the resin was making the house stink. So we are now in the workshop. And speaking of the resin, um, it has dried rather beautifully, in fact. Yeah, I hope you can make out the uh, the bubbles and the um, the texture there that the, the resin has produced. It's reacted with the, uh, the fake blood. So you can see it flowing down the altar stone into the uh, into the hot tub of death through that little uh, waterfall feature there and then down this uh, this river that we've got here so you're know, flowing down there so yeah really happy with how that's turned out um, in case you're wondering the um, other project that I did just to show you how to actually make the boiling blood has turned out pretty well um, you can see there it's uh, going to be for the snowy side of the board and there's a little skeleton there having a relax in this uh, in this wonderful boiling blood hot spring. So that will just go on the table quite nicely, just like this. There you go. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And we're going to be in the workshop for the next couple of videos, because I want to show you how to make this, which is a well. So we'll be looking at a really quick, cheap and easy way that you can make a, a well. So you can either use this for um, games like Warcry or Age of Sigma, where you want something a little bit more high fantasy, like this one, which is um, a well full of diseased brackened water with a little, uh, little tentacle poking out of it there. Or if you just want to make a well for any type of historical war game as well. But I'll be talking you through that. I'll be talking about how to um, create this sort of texture that we've got on the side here. Um, I'll be talking about how to make the... Uh, the water or water-like substance effect inside here and in general we'll just be having a having a little bit of fun in the shed so hope to see you then um, if you feel like it you know like share subscribe favorite um, if you don't feel like it then uh, then don't you know no skin off my nose um, any questions any comments stick them in the well, the comment section thanks so much for your time see you soon bye bye